Theo. Good to have you on the show. Thank you very much, Honor. Uh, I understand you've been listed 77 years, and uh, yeah. this is uh, a record year, actually. Yeah, it's the best result. W what so haven't I touched? Uh, I think we're humbled and pleased that we were able to bring a very good result. It's mm. the best in 77 years. It's our new high water mark, a 16% increase in headline earnings. And our two verticals produce similar increase in earnings, 16% uh, increase from our automotive components business and 17% from our energy vertical. But I think what's very significant for us, corporate South Africa has been struggling with returns from overseas invested businesses. And the fact that three out of our four major overseas investments performed very well. In Turkey, we had a 30% increase in PBIT line. Uh, in, in Romania, in Turkey, we had a 55% increase and from Kenya, 10%. So we're quite proud of our standalone international acquisition performances in a very, very difficult market. Uh, Theo, if I look at some of the numbers here, um, other operating income, it's up 75%. You know, some of these markets that you're talking about, um, a, a traditional investor might look at uh, maybe Russia or uh, uh, Romania or uh, Turkey and, and get a bit cautious, but we're, we're seeing the immense returns here. Um, wh what's the secret here, if I could just uh, put it a bit bluntly? I think the secret is always the quality of the asset that you invested in. We really make sure that we find real quality assets. That's the leader in the market. We've got very, very competitive uh, positions with very strong strand value, brand value, and well balanced. In our Turkey business, 30% of our business is derived from local OEM business, 30% from the aftermarket, but 30% is also exported. So well-balanced business, very good management teams, quality of asset, and then fortunate we're in a non-discretionary product. Mm. You know, a battery, nobody wants to push start their car, so you need to buy <laughs> a battery. <laughs> right. Uh, I remember attending a particular uh, event. Um, it was more like a rant. Uh, some members of NADA were quite displeased by uh, the policies that have been put forward, and the Competition Commission is not particularly helping out. Um, how much uncertainty or how, how much of risk are we seeing from the policy uncertainty here in South Africa? You mentioned the OEM space. Yeah. How much uncertainty are we seeing there? I think we're in a little uh, utopia. Uh, we've always had a long association with DTI, our custodian of our business is Minister Rob Davies. Mm. And the policy clarity that's been giving to the automotive industry as a whole in South Africa has been fantastic. They've launched the SAM program, South African Automotive Master Plan. Included in that plan is the automotive production and development plan. Mm. It gives fantastic support to the industry. So we've seen a record number of vehicles exported from South Africa last year and a record investment in the industry by our OEM customers. Also with the addition of bike, there's eight OEM within the South African environment and we're getting our first inquiries from the new entrant. So policy security is a little bit of a microcosm. In the automotive industry, it's been very, very, very secure and very clear for the last 10 years. Look, let's uh, touch on uh, a scandal that happened a few years ago. Volkswagen uh, with their diesel uh, uh, engines and uh, the emissions. Mm. And uh, this has kind of had a, a, a trickle-down effect because ultimately more safety has come into the play, into the fray. And after that, it has slowed down uh, car cars that are uh, coming out of uh, uh, mm. the factories. Uh, has this affected you as someone who delivers uh, sound components to these cars ultimately? Yeah, I think... You know, big market trends and technology trends influence strategy. And uh, that's where the biggest influence comes. Mm. It's accelerated the launch of electric vehicles. Electric vehicles is part of a technology trend or technology pool in our business. Our strategy has always been customer market and technology influenced. At the moment, it's strong position towards technology. And we're properly reviewing our strategy to achieve 50 million battery sales for instance, in the lead acid battery space. We're finding that our customers request us currently for dual technology uh, provider to be in lead acid batteries together with lithium ion. And maybe the lithium ion technology pool can be bigger in the future. So yes, it does affect us. We're very, very well designed. The commodities that we are in, plastics, aluminum, copper, lead, is the winners in the race in electric vehicles. They are the components that increase in content in the new environment. So we've chosen, and that's not our doing, we mustn't claim something that we haven't done. The original founder of the business has designed the business very, very well 
that we in the commodities that will ultimately be the winner in electric vehicle launches or accelerated launch of electric vehicles. Right. Uh, let's just uh, touch that particularly. You've invested a 35% stake in uh, Prime Motors as an incubator. Uh, we're seeing some research, some R&D here. How much are we talking about here and uh, what's the cost of servicing this in the long term? Yeah, I think we were very uh, lucky that we found an excellent partner, a gentleman called Adrian Pollock, who started, he was the, the startup of Prime Motors. Mm -hmm. We only invested a million euros. Uh, we managed to build a talent pool uh, in this year in the lithium ion technology. We moved the company from pre-sales to first uh, customer acquiring and a sales position. We broke even in the first year. And the big portion is we've developed our own technology that particularly addresses one challenge in the lithium ion technology space. Mm. And that's being able to operate at very, very low temperatures, the minus 18 to the minus 28 degree level. So we see that as a very, very good uh, development that we've done. And the fact that the company's turned its profit in the first year that we've invested in it is also a good understanding. So we had a cheap entry. We've come up with a very clever, or he has come up with a very clever, what we call multi-level modular uh, lithium ion line design concept mm. that make it possible in the small niche market. We never want to be in the big market player that requires big capital, but in the small niche markets like South Africa, like Turkey, like yeah. Romania, where the big players are never going to come to, that we be a dual technology solutions provider to the automotive industry when it comes to the energy portion of the supply. Right, now Theo, very briefly, I, I just want to touch some of the, the financials here. Contract assets, uh, this just went from not to uh, 288,777. Uh, uh, the borrowings are also up uh, from just over 600,000 to uh, 850,000. Uh, just walk us through this particular two. Is the borrowing actually part of uh, the, the capital that was raised for Prime or are we seeing some other debt structure here? No, the Prime investment was for so small, it's only a million euros. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you say so small. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, we always deal with accounting issues. Uh, IFRS 9 and IFRS 50 has affected where the classification lies. And that's so, so the bottom line effect of the new accounting standards is only 4 million rand. Uh. I mean, so we had to do a lot of homework to only land on the 4 million, but the disclosure, and that's the disclosure portion of the IFRS accounting changes uh, standards 15, from 15 and 9. Yeah.